All right, uh, we are now recording a new Fantasy Grounds Mongoose GM 101 class. Uh, we have uh, a live audience. We got three students with us. We have Australis, Dazrand, and Jazer North. Uh, their voices will probably be recorded as they ask their questions and we interact through this. Um, for tonight's uh, session, for the next hour and a half or so, we're going to cover the uh, creation of a game table for Mongoose Traveler. Uh, setting up the options, loading the data library, and the various GM tools for running an adventure. So right now, uh, for the class, you guys can see the screen, right? Um, if you haven't yet, I have a screen share going in Discord. Uh, please hover over my name and hit join or start watching, I believe. There we go. We got everybody's in. Uh, recording is good on my screen for the class. So this is the Fantasy Grounds launch screen. Um, there's a few things I want to talk about that the GM needs to know specifically. Uh, some things for the players. And I'm going to go a little out of order on this uh, in some parts. Uh, first thing, though, I want to point out, um, as, as the GM... Your, your name that you registered on Fantasy Grounds with, uh, once you're logged in through the settings, of course I did that, um, I was gonna bring it up, uh, you know, username and password, and then it has the account, you can link your Steam and stuff. There we go, I'll cancel, launch Fantasy Grounds again. So that, what you set up on the website is what you go through in settings here. Um, and this is going to be the name you hand out to your players if you have a public game uh, using the cloud. There we go. Get that goofy thing out of there. Uh, so if, if anybody wants to connect to my game tonight, uh, you're going to be connecting to Greg Rex, capital G, capital R. Uh, next thing I want to point out uh, is version. Version control of Fantasy Grounds Ultimate is actually pretty important. Uh, it has to do with the... Uh, the networking and architecture on the cloud, and then how, uh, what kind of errors that your players may trigger and encounter if they're connecting to your game on a different version. Um, the latest versions are released weekly, or updates are released weekly on Tuesdays. Um, if you could, have, if you have a game day on a Tuesday and can avoid hitting update, uh, I'd advise against doing that. Uh, usually, things are fixed on Wednesday and definitely stable on Thursday if there's a bug that's found. Um, but to update, uh, if you know you're out of date, you'll see a check for updates here in the bottom left. Uh, and it's going to be this uh, red box that goes around here. All you do is hit check for updates, and then the launcher will restart, and it'll start running the update. And then it'll bring it back here when it's done. So anybody connecting to me tonight will be on version 4.2.2. All right, so this is where I'm going to get a little out of order. No, we just talked about my name here. Um, but if I go down to join campaign, this is where you want your players to go. And you see I've connected to some games here recently. Uh, even myself, you could actually run a second client and reconnect to yourself. Um, what you do, though, if it's a public cloud, uh, you type in that GM name. You're not, I'm not going to be on here because I don't actually have a session. Whoop, R-E-X. There's nothing actually running right now. Uh, if I have a private session... Um, where it's not, not publicly listed. See, these are all publicly listed games here on Fantasy Grounds going right now. I'll even ask since here I was on a different game of his. Um, you would just join by D, by GM and then hit start. Um, even You wouldn't select the campaign that's running because uh, it's a private session. And the last thing you could do, um, you don't have to use the cloud architecture to make a connection. You could use the IP, in which case the GM uh, will have to provide their, their IP, um, presumably from their MAC address, unless they're doing some crazy networking. You know, uh, they got a box running in the cloud or something. I don't know. But the uh, beautiful thing about Fantasy Grounds is it comes with its own cloud hosting, even though the game is run locally on the GM's host machine, whether it's a Macintosh, Linux, or Windows. All right, next up. Um, so this, that was kind of the backwards part. This is how you get players to connect. Now, they can't connect until you create a campaign. 
Um, I'm going to show I got I'm an addict, a fantasy grounds addict. I have a bunch of rule sets that most of you probably don't have, um, but we do have the Mongoose Traveler 2E. You will not see that unless you actually own the rule set. Um, so I'm going to flip. I'm going to show you the, the web store. So the fantasy grounds web page here. Um, if you scroll down on it, uh, there are two Traveler editions. You have Mongoose Traveler first edition, which you get on the tooltip if you hover over it and the second edition. If you click here, you're gonna see the entire catalog uh, of, of available content for Mongoose Traveler 2 that is already converted and available for Fantasy Grounds. Um, you can also get the same thing on Steam. If you if you prefer it on Steam, it's a, it's a copy pretty much of the repository. Um, in a GM 102 class, if you already own the content, say on PDF, I could show how to copy and paste and parse everything into fantasy grounds you don't have to buy this you don't even have to use mongoose traveler 2 material on a mongoose traveler table you could use some um you know um uh, old uh, game designers workshop stuff if you wanted and black books and put them in there it's totally up to you so uh one other thing is the core rule book right now is the uh the original 2e rule set that came out i think in 2019 the core 2022 update is not parsed into Fantasy Grounds uh, at the time of this recording. However, if you do purchase the core rule set now, you will get the new core 2022 update, uh, the, the images and updated tables and text. The reason being the actual underlying um, programming for the, for the core mechanics of the game haven't changed. So they actually the programmer doesn't have to do anything other than take the time to to do the conversion for the text and images. And I think there's like new, the, some career tables got updated, but things where you used to get a boon or a bane and now you get the bonus plus plus or minus two, I believe um, that was that was in part of a fantasy grounds automation to begin with. So he doesn't have to recode anything. So it's still this is actually still core 2022. If you if you know what I'm talking about. Any questions about that? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go create this campaign, right? Uh, Mongoose Traveler 2. We're just going to call it uh, FGA oops, with an F uh, 101, uh, GM 101. Um, I am going to post this on the cloud. Um, if I Again, if I did LAN, that's where I would hand out these IPVs, uh, in which case, uh, you know, if this goes right to the internet uh you know someone's gonna write a download service attack on me or maybe you guys are writing one on me right now so this ought to be edited um but that's if you just do the land to cloud like i said before you can make it public or private i'm going to keep it public so if anybody joins they could easily see the game in the um the lobby there but i will set a password so nobody crashes us i'm just going to do it fga lowercase so if you log in if a player logs in what's going to happen is they're going to get an error connecting uh, and it'll say, please enter password or something to that effect. It kind of changes, but I believe that's the, the most current update. Uh, last thing to point out are the extensions. I have, I have quite a few extensions, themes. Um, a lot of questions we get at the Fantasy Grounds Academy is how do you get that cool blue uh, traveler theme? Well, it comes default. It comes vanilla with Fantasy Grounds. There's nothing you got to do. You don't have to select a theme or buy a theme. When you purchase the core rules, you get the actual... Uh, vanilla out of the box, uh, cool travel theme background, which we're about to see. So, any questions before I begin? I'm going to launch this. And I will say this I don't think I've ever run an extension on uh, Fantasy Grounds for Traveler. I do run a few for my 5e stuff, but this stuff I don't. I, there's not a, a single extension I could recommend for, for Mongoose. Everything that the developer made, uh, this rule set just works out of the box for me. So we'll go ahead and hit start. Now, uh, what this is doing is creating the session on the cloud. It's just it's, uh, downloading my, my data, uh, building a cloud session. It'll only be there for as long as this table is open. And then once I close it, the players will not be able to connect. Uh, so it's something to keep in mind. It's not a, a persistent cloud once you create it. It's, once you leave the, the software, you, once you shut down Fantasy Grounds, then th that cloud instance actually gets deleted. Uh, and But everything is saved locally to your computer. So it's not like you lose it when it goes down. 
All right, uh, just kind of going straight down the room. I'm gonna ask, is anybody connecting in Australia? So are you gonna plan on connecting? I'll probably just watch from here. Okay, Dazrand, are you planning on connecting? No, I'll watch from here as well. Okay, Jays are just connected. Hey, Pudgy, welcome. Are you gonna be connecting? I think Pudgy's just watching. All right. So when we get in, Jazer, um, I know that you're still connecting because I had that spinning wheel, even though it said connected, but I'm probably, now that it's done, you probably have it up. Um, so you can see when players log into your table and they'll probably start creating characters or grabbing characters and they'll be popping up and we'll get to show some of that stuff. So I do want to start on this campaign setup. Um, the, the first landing page here is a user guide and forms. These are hy hyperlinks to take you to the internet. Uh, if you click on any of them, you'll get asked. It's a safety protocol if you want to go. I'm just going to hit no. I don't, I'm not interested. This is something you guys could do in your off time and read this stuff. Uh, next is the data modules. Uh, this is um, directly linked to library. Um, on our sidebar on Fantasy Grounds, this right side is a library dropdown. And this uh, modules uh, is actually this modules. So you'll see if I just click it, it's empty. There's nothing here. Because there's nothing here, there's no uh, story for like, we don't have an adventure, but we all know uh, Greg owns like every adventure on Fantasy Grounds. So why, does, why don't we see it? Why aren't there items like uh, from the uh, central supply catalog. Why is this all empty? It's because we haven't loaded anything yet. Our modules is empty. Uh, so from this this screen here, you you could actually uh, just click like all you want all the mongoose traveler core rules. Anything that's tagged, it's got a, a metal label core rules. You could hit that and it's going to load. I was going to take a second. Uh, what it's doing is downloading uh, tens or hundreds of megabytes and putting it up on the cloud. Uh, so this is now loaded. So now if I go back to modules, you see I have the core rules. I have the reference manual. This is like an e-reader. You could even like expand this out. Come on, got it. Uh, right, make it a full screen if I want. And I go flip through this. You have the, the full text uh, scaled uh, to, to fantasy grounds here. All right, everything's here. And things are even hyperlinked, like I could open up the mustering out benefits table and it's it's here, um, it's already parsed in. Um, we have images, let me see if we can find a quick image. Oh, I guess I don't know. Oh, it's probably down here, that's why it keeps, yep. And they, you know, these will pop out, right? And then they're just records that you could share to your players. For example, I don't know if the core rule book's what we wanna share. So we have the full reference. So we have reference data. Um, we could, um, through modules, we could also go back so and do activation. Maybe we want a couple like the central su supply catalog and high guard, things like that. Aliens of chartered space. Um, some things you see, I have like um, this D and D tactical maps reincarnated. There's some. There are some things that aren't rule set specific. So you buy it from Fantasy Grounds web store um, and it doesn't have a rule set specific use um, like like maps and stuff, um, then you get them. Uh, so I'll just load this dust station. That's free actually on the Fantasy Grounds Forge, full conversion. Uh, I will load, uh, we got the Pirates of Dranax stuff. So a lot of POD. A lot of JTASs are available with adventures. I think even um, the, the the converter, um, Mad Beard Man, even uh, parses these out. So there are the adventures are um, are story entries, I believe. So, uh, yep. So you have the two adventures from JTAS four, JTAS Journal of the Travelers Aid Society for those that are new to Mongoose Traveler or any traveler in general. Uh, I refer to it as JTAS. Um, and then I say TAS, the T-A-S, that's this link here on, you know, on the far left line. Uh, these are hyperlinks. Anything with a TAS is a hyperlink. Uh, but yeah, we got the, the adventures all here. It's all parsed in as a story entry. So we could, we could use this if we wanted for, for context. I'm also going to load uh, high and dry. That's the, my number one. You, you type in here, high and search. 
Uh, I run this at conventions a lot, so uh, this will probably be the one that we use. You know, central supply catalog, I got all this stuff you can load from modules, and we have all this reference material. We have the images uh, that come with it. They're all all parsed in, so it's uh, it's nice. I didn't do any work other than you know uh, just hitting load. That was it. It's now it's in Fantasy Grounds. All the work is done for me because I own it on the Fantasy Grounds web store. I purchased it there. And again, you don't have to do that. GM 102 will show you how to parse material that you already own into Fantasy Grounds without having to, to buy it again if you already own it. Now, any questions so far about the modules and activation for campaign setup? Okay, going on to the next step. We have our options. So this options here now correlates to this options over here on the sidebar. They're the same location, uh, but because this is the initial launch, uh, this is the kind of one you go through these steps. Uh, so some things I'm just gonna be, I usually go line by line on these, uh, but because we do that for other classes, um, I'm gonna actually just kind of be a little bit more specific about what is what is unique to the uh, Traveler rule set. I mean, I'm sure you could already see some things that stand out to you that are unique. Uh, and I'm also gonna do some things that uh, every GM needs to know or should know uh, when they go through here, but I'm not gonna do the line by line. Uh, first thing is damage characteristic order. So our physical characteristics, uh, you, you set a, a global override, currently endurance, strength, and dex are what's gonna be uh, reduced as as uh, PCs, NPCs, uh, well, NPCs for you, because this is per user. The players could change theirs if you uh, talk them through this. Uh, so they're going to lose endurance, strength, and dex in that order. But you could cycle through by just clicking anywhere in the box, and you may get strength, dex, endurance, strength, endurance, dex, dex, endurance, strength. You get the entire spectrum. And the same thing, the heal. So for me, I like to reverse heal. I would, get, if I do endurance, strength, dex, and I would say dex, strength, endurance is going to be the um, recovery order. There, there we go. It's really up to the, uh, the ref, the GM, how they want to do that. Uh, while we're on here, auto center on map. This is a uh, kind of a controversial feature, actually. Um, if you are using tokens on a map, uh, you got a battle map. Um, you got five players and maybe maybe a dozen NPCs. You got a nice big battle going, um, and hopefully hopefully the uh, the players are in a good shape. Um, what by default Fantasy Grounds will will auto center on the tokens whose turn it is in the initiative step order. Uh, now, how does it know what the initiative step order? That's tracked up here through the combat tracker, which we're going to go through a little bit later. But the initiative um, will determine whose token it zooms to. As a GM, I personally love that because when I, I zoom way in on my NPCs and players when it's their turn, uh, but my players generally hate it because they don't care what everybody else is doing and not their turn. Uh, they're spending the entire round waiting for it to come back to them and they're prepping, they're watching uh, they're panning the map around. They don't want it bouncing around on them. It's more cinematic for them if they have control. So you want to tell your players, because it's a per user, to turn this to off. All right, a couple more things. This is important too. So show GM roles is set to off. So if I, if I pick up 2D6, so in the bottom left is our dice stack, and we have a D6, I can could, I could pick it up, but we know Mongoose Traveler, most Traveler versions are 2D6. So you can just right click and grab two. Ah, so on the box cards. But you can see right here uh, that this is uh, invisible. The, the players do not see my role. Uh, I know this. Um, now my players, yeah, it shows that you're old, right? But you didn't see the result. I could, I could reveal it. I could grab it. So you see, I got it grabbed and I could re-release it. And then the players could see the result. If, you know, if they, they want to integrity check you or something, or you really want to show them the awesome role you made like I just did. Um, but um, everything is rolled behind. It's, it's off. I call it a GM screen. You're behind the GM screen by default. Now, uh, you could turn that on, show GM rolls to on. All right. And now Jazer should see this result. All right. Eight. So no problem. Um, 
now this is where it gets interesting. Maybe you want to you want a dice tower on your table. You could turn this on, and this is like a, a ship's locker. And I, I like to move it. I'm I'm not a fan of it being in the bottom right, but this is all rule sets are down on the bottom right on fantasy rounds. Uh, you got to unlock it. So I right click it, twelve o'clock position. I hit unlock. Now I could drag it. Go ahead and lock it back here. And maybe now uh, this this dice result I don't want them to see. So now I'm going to release it in the dice tower. So now now we know I rolled a ten, but Jazer doesn't. Um, when I when I implemented this, um, it went to every every player. So every player's table has the the dice tower set, uh, which means now you can do skill check rolls in the tower uh, should you want. And the the players don't know what the result is; only the GM does. Thank you, Jazer. So you can see this was a tower roll. E or the table doesn't know what the result is, but I logged it as an eight. So that's great. Um, now the last thing, this this is kind of the um, where, where people kind of get confused sometimes. GMs, um, if I want a dice tower at my table, uh, but I want to show GM rolls to off permanently, where'd my dice tower go? Well, as far as fantasy rounds is concerned, is you don't need a dice tower because one hundred percent of your rolls, no matter what, are going to be hidden from the table, so it, it makes it disappear. But I assure you. If it's on, the dice tower is on. Your players have it on their table. Now, now, yeah. So, Jazer, do me, a, do me, so, do me a quick favor because I can't, I can't uh, show this the way I, as a GM, but I could prove that it works. Right-click the dice tower, and there'll be a radial that comes up, and it says uh, "Whisper GM." Can you send me a private message that way, real quick? Oh, maybe. Did you ask me a question? Oh yeah, sorry, Jazer. Can you right click on the uh, the dice tower and send me a whisper? You should have an option to whisper GM. I can. Um, <clears throat> I'm using that new technology of Starlink, and every once in a while, I just get disconnected. Oh, so. I see. All good. I just want to show because I can't prove that when I when I have a dice tower as a GM, uh, show GM rules. I don't have that option. Oh yeah, I mean you just disconnected. There is a not to keep this this held up. Um, there is an option for players when they right click it to whisper the GM. That's how they send a direct message, so the rest of the table doesn't see it. So okay, we're gonna keep we're gonna move on. Oh, you're coming back. Maybe we can. If it comes through, we'll we'll stop and show it. Um, next up is uh, um, this is all pretty much the same across rule sets. Um, we use this coloring system. I call it green to red, then red to dead. So uh, if there's a, a a pip on a token or next to a character and it and it's green, that means they have full health. If it goes yellow, that means there's somewhere in the middle if they go red they're near critical death and then when there's no color they're dead um so that's that's kind of how we got this system set up ally health player display uh detailed means that they will see you know their attributes they'll, they'll know what their total pool of, of uh, wounds are technically uh you need a character okay yeah uh, next up show armor value yes or no uh uh, this one I like to, to talk about is Skip uh, Dead Ally. Uh, this is as we go through the combat tracker. Um, if you have it turned on, uh, it won't stop on a dead player. It'll keep going. Skip Hidden Actor. This one I, I like to keep on a lot. There we go. So my character. So this is a whisper. Uh, and I just got it right here. And I'll get a dinging noise in my headset because um, Ring on Whisper is on. So... Um, so skip hidden actor is on. That's if you have, you know, like there's a sniper in a tower and the players don't know where it's coming from. They haven't identified, uh, you know, they're still doing IFF, identify friend or foe. Uh, that that kind of thing is nice. And then and then uh, you can keep shooting or whatever the scenario is without the players knowing where that token is or knowing that there's even that there's even at least one or more uh, enemy snipers in this example on the map with them because they're hidden. Uh, it won't stop 
in the initiative in the combat tracker on that step. It'll just go through them. And I'm going to keep it on. We'll show that uh, at the end when we do a, uh, the, the combat tracker. All right. A couple more things. Um, these are all the same across rule sets. Um, tool tips, anything that's labeled a tool tip, that means if you hover over it in fantasy rounds, you'll get a little tool tip pop up. All right. So show study period skills tab on character. So now that you got a character, I'm actually going to show this off. Um, so if I go to uh, skills, we by default, you get the unskilled skill. But if we're going to do training, you get our study periods for eight weeks. Um, that's how you actually increase your character's uh, abilities. There's no experience or leveling up in Traveler. Uh, they have study periods where they can increase their skills or they can buy better gear. That's pretty much it. Right, so um, show study periods. You hit yes, right, and then you could you know you type in the skill you're training for, uh, and then uh, you're on week one of eight, right, uh, and then maybe you yeah, <laughs> training training for fancy grounds, right, and then because we have a calendar system which is going to be loaded, you actually you can show your players. Your players could track this stuff. Uh, Next up, I may have to re reopen this and close it. You can see we have all this dead space in here. That's because it's for these optional characteristics. We have, you know, Psy, uh, if it's a hyper, it, it does a, a checksum based on race. So, uh, Aslan, you're not going to get these unless that's the race they pick. I could actually, I could show you. We could actually go down here to character because I do have uh, just a basic. We could do an Aslan. I could do, I'm just going to drop race right on here. Right, and we got all this automation just came through, plus two strength, minus two dex, height and senses were added, do claw was added. All right, so um, now let me let me see if I do this. There we go. Now we have territory because it on um, when I did the Ed like and I said check some, it's an if if Aslan, then it does this, right? Um the same with the other the other races as they come available. Charm. Luck, morale, sanity, wealth, right? These are all can be used or not used. All these optional characteristics from Traveler. Usually, I usually see like luck, psi, and then whatever the racial is. Um, yep, and some more. And then Traveler Companion. This comes default whether you own the Traveler Companion or not. You can see we didn't even load the Traveler Companion. So it's it's a great nod by Mongoose and the developer to allow us to have this, whether we actually uh, um, have the reference material. Uh, it's kind of assumed this is stuff that you could be using if you own it, the physical copy. At least this is available for you. You don't need to buy that twice. Any questions about options? I got one more thing I do want to show, but any, any other questions about options or questions, period? Uh, how does it handle the optional experience rules in the companion, or does it? It does, I and mean, it's just something you're actually going to have to manually track manually. right now. Okay. Yeah, Good yeah, enough. yeah. He's going to have a um, a character wizard coming in the future, the developer. I think he's going to include it there, but it's just going to be a field where you yeah. you manually track it because it's not the oh, you know. Yeah, cool. it's not. Yeah, it's, was it what you, per session you get one? I, I I remember glossing over it a while ago, but yeah. Right now, we just handle it in the notes section of a character sheet um, right here. You just have to manually track it. All right, uh, before I get off options, this is also where we change our background decal. So background decal, I click this button here, and then all these cool options come up for this rule set. Yeah, you know where this came from. Whatever whatever flavor you want to add, yeah, to your your game, it's uh, you got quite a bit based on what you. It is based on what you own. So some some stuff like this probably came out of High Guard or something, right? Uh, Pirates of Axe. So it depends what you own. Mission Mission of Mithril. Uh, you could set the cover background. So it's pretty neat. Um, or you don't even have to have one at all. You just you know just have the plain old background. They're fun, so I like them. So, any, oh, yeah, this came with one of the aliens. Any any questions about the options? Oh, and I closed my setup, Greg. So if you ever want to go back to setup, you just go down here in options. And we left off on options. Here we go. So any questions so far before I move on? 
Okay, go ahead and then I'm gonna, before I click finish, if this is an ongoing campaign, I don't wanna see this campaign set up every time, especially that I know that I can fine tune it through options and modules over here. So I'm gonna unclick show on load. I know it's, how do you know that it's checked, but it's filled in, so unclick it and then I hit finish. The next time I fire up this session, that won't pop up. Okay, on time. Okay, we still got a little under an hour. So we're gonna start going through. Uh, as you can tell already, Jazer, do you want to get a prof uh, profile pic for uh, my character? Portrait? And then we're, we'll come back over there. But I'm going to kind of go work uh, quickly uh, counterclockwise uh, across the chat, uh, the dice stack, and then the hot bar. And uh, then we're going to go top to bottom over here on the right. Um, first thing I want to talk about chat, it can be resized. You could unlock it by right clicking. Uh, unlock position, and then you see this little thing popped up here. You grab it, resize it. Um, I like going wider and shorter. Um, that gives me more real estate up here to to put some tools. And then I'll relock it position. Uh, I could clear chat in here if I wanted to. Um, one other thing I want to show is something called a slash command. So if I hit forward slash on my keyboard and hit enter, uh, I get all the rule set slash commands. I uh, went right to the bottom. Um, you turn up your dice volume or turn it off, um, get some cool moods. But the big one I want to talk about, two of the big ones, but this big one I want to talk about is scale UI. I, I'm probably at a UI 110 or 120 if I had to guess. So uh, by default, your scale UI, forward slash scale UI is 100. This will probably be a lot sharper, right? Uh, for me, because I'm old, uh, this is a little too crisp. I, I'm not ready for bifocals. I like it a little bit bigger. Uh, but if I set it to now to like 90, this is for people with like huge TVs that they're playing on. This is what they want. Uh, and you know, this yeah, yeah you're kind of gaining more and more space, but it's very it's harder and harder to read. Uh, so increments at 10. But I like uh, if I go back up to 100, that's normal. If I go up to 110. So I like, I always tell my players to go in increments of 10 until they get what they want. My, my magic number is 120. Uh, yours may be different based on your uh, monitor size and resolution. So those are things to, to help your players out because, uh, and yourself, uh, you'll hear, you'll hear the complaint that I can't see the text. And you say, well, is it too big or too small? If they say it's too small, you would tell them you want to scale their UI up to 110 and then just keep going up in increments. If it's too big. They want to go the other way. They want to go to 90, then 80, then 70 until they, they fine tune it to where they want it. Uh, next thing, I like using um, vote. So I could do, um, you say just vote, but then it accepts text. So um, in the greater than or less than greater than, uh, you could actually type in text. Uh, I'll do like a ready check. So we're coming back from a break. I'll call for a ready check and you get this ready check. Now, Jazer, yeah, you clicked it. You can hit it again. It says he's not ready, and then hit it again. Uh, if I don't get anything in there, that tells me they don't have their headset on and they're not back from their break until I get, you know, if you got five or six players, I'm looking for five, five or six check marks. Um, FYI, uh, the check marks, it doesn't tell you who it is, um, but through trial and error that we found that these check marks are filled in the order that the player connected to your table. So if you go all the way back up and you really got to know who did it, uh, you look for that connection message. Uh, I, I cleared my log, uh, my, my chat log, so I can't go back, but uh, just roll it down there. All right, that's uh, tips and tricks on the chat for the GM. Um, real quick yeah. there, if you do slash info, okay. it will, it's going to show your IP as well. But anyway, um, uh, it'll show you the order they connected. Okay. So let me clear that. And then, all right. Good. I didn't know that. That was awesome. I always learn something new. I always, even though I teach it, I'm still a student. All right. So now we're going to go talk about the dice stack. Um, Traveler, we'll, we'll, we'll speak specifically to Traveler from here. Um, everything, well, not everything, but what we what we do, the mechanics is 2d6 and you're trying to hit uh, a target number called the task difficulty. You're trying to um, meet or exceed that task difficulty on your dice rolls on the 2d6. Um, you could type in, you know, most things are eight, right? Um, or you can make it a six. 
Uh, technically, I know the rules is written. There, most intervals are, are all intervals that I'm aware of are in intervals of two, but you could make it a seven. And I'm just I'm clicking in the box and I'm typing my my integer, you know. Uh, or you could um, actually simple, easy, routine, average, difficult, right? You just go up and do this. Now, um, yeah, so that you did exactly what I was about to say. Players have agency over this too. So you have to watch this log. Um, for first time players on my tables, uh, I make the ground rule. Please do not change the task difficulty. Tell me what your target number is if, um, if it's something that's not an eight. I mean, I know, I know J drive operation is, uh, you know, astrogations for J drive engineers for right roll, roll. We, we got that. That's not a problem. Uh, it's like those, 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 uh, obscure, you know, within this skill, it describes a certain scenario that it falls under. Now the test difficulty is uh, a 10 or six, things like that. So I know like landing a ship is a six docking is a six thing, but, um, I asked my players not to change that. Uh, this the, the developer allowed it to change because he assumes the players know what it is, um, right? If you're playing the game, you know the rules. Uh, you can set your own task difficulty before you roll. Uh, my thing is I don't like having to audit the rules, so it is uh, I, I like having agency over it, and uh, not my players. But that that'll be up to you and your players. If you've been playing with your, it's you and your friends. You've been playing Traveler for forty years, then it, it may not be a conversation you need to have. Uh, my players are as new as I am, so uh, we're all new in the last two years. So that was starting there. So I'll put it back on. I'll probably try to keep it on eight because that's what most things are. Uh, we have a uh, modifier. So remember, I was doing some dice rolls earlier. Right, got to ten. Uh, I could type, and when I left click, you can see it's adjusting. I could do any value, positive or negative. I can make it a, you know, a negative four minus four and then make my dice roll all right so uh, i rolled a 11 minus four is seven that's all there uh, you could quickly just do the because we do plus and minus two a lot now that's what i was talking about earlier this is it's not a video game the, the programming you still have to know your rules so if you're if you're you're using the new core 2022 or the boons and banes have mostly gone away uh, you don't you don't have to do this. Uh, you just hit the plus two and minus two. Um, the boon, if you know, you check it. Uh, what it does is takes does three d six and it drops the lowest. Uh, the lowest being a two, so I kept eleven. The bane, right? Anytime I roll three three or two d six, it's gonna. I don't remember. Sorry, I do. I select two d six, and because bane is checked, it rolls three d six. That automation is there. So um, it knows how to drop the highest on a, on a bane. It knows to drop the lowest on a boon. It knows how to apply uh, modifiers if I do boon and plus two, right? And it's a 2d6 roll. It's going to calculate all that. Drop to five. Wow, I rolled three fives. Drop to five, add the plus two, I got a 12. So this is all uh, uh, traveler rolls. There's no special uh, dice set that we get. now. Um, Jazer, I'm going to just throw a skill on your um, your sheet, uh, not unskilled, just so we could show this off real quick. Uh, I hope you like art because you're now an artist. And we do an override. We can make uh, art based off your uh, education. All right, so education. Go ahead and give me uh, an art check. What he's going to do, uh, if you go all the way to the final row under total, you'll double click it. Or you could grab it and drag and drop it like this. Sorry, we'll, we're going to. Both rolls are both probably all right. So we can see, and you got the effect. Uh, the first roll of an eight had an effect of zero because eight minus eight is a zero. Uh, next, we got a, an effect of two because 10 minus eight is a plus two. So when you need to know what the effect is, especially if you're doing task chains or something like that, uh, it gives you the effect. Fancy Grounds understands that, knows the rules. Now, I could do an override. Maybe, maybe it's not going to be you got education. But I'm going to say it's a social art. Like maybe you're in an art gallery trying to grade something and you're, you're hobnobbing. Uh, go ahead and give me an art skill check one more time. All right. Oh, because it doesn't show. Uh, this was, it did an override. Uh, it would have been different. What's up? I think that was a question I was going to ask you earlier. And now you just showed it. 
if I, I click the edu and then double click, then it will, right? Well, the problem oh. is, yeah. The, so our problem is actually um, th these values are the same. So let's make it different. Let's make let's get, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, education twelve, uh, but and then put your social at like six or something. So we have a negative. Maybe it's a five. Maybe we need a five to be a, a negative. So let's make it a five. No oh, four. There we go. And then one thing we and do got to check. We got to check. We got to make sure. Let me go ahead and reset all these because they get go goofy the first time. Because I kept adding and, and removing them. Okay, so now let's try it again. Your your uh, education is a plus two bonus, or your social is a minus one. So go ahead and give me your uh, just straight up. Give me it with your uh, as is education, no override. We'll see that this should be a plus two, right? Two d six plus two. Now if I override it and say it's a social, now it's me the GM. Go and don't you don't hit anything. Just go ahead and give me another art roll. This should be at a negative now see that's not true then so then you go ahead and hit your social override right here and then make the same roll there it is so that's it has to be done by whoever's making that dice roll to make the override okay so i'll give a little trial and error to, to verify how that works so everything down here uh from boone the social has to be checked by whoever's making that role. Because if I make a boon check and and um, my character go ahead and make a dice roll, a, uh, an art, another art roll, it doesn't throw that extra three d six. Now go ahead and you, I uncheck boon. You you check boon and make that roll. See, I did it that way. So this is whoever is making the roll from boon right here, or really the modifier, all the way over to education social. It's got to be whatever that, whatever, whoever's making that roll, they're the ones that have to check it. Any questions about that? All right, last thing while we're on this, because I don't really do introductory classes for fantasy grounds, uh, dice color is determined um, by this tool up here under tools, uh, color palette, the Bob Ross color palette. You can change it, I can make it like white. Right, and then I can make the text white or black. I guess that's an off blue because we can still see the white. Um, every player that changes it, you can see up here, their pip changes. Uh, it, and this is actually gives you visual cues on different things and fantasy grounds on who's doing what. Like if they draw on the map, I can look up here and say, well, this kind of magenta looking color was my character. So that's who drew that. Okay. That's it for this dice stack area. Uh, still got about 40 minutes. We've got plenty of time. This is good. This is going great. Uh, any questions so far? All right. Like I said, uh, now we're going to be working on the sidebar from top to bottom. And then uh, that'll be pretty much it. So combat tracker. Now that we got it, thanks, uh, Jazer, for being in here. Uh, to put somebody in the combat tracker, or you really want the whole party in there. You you grab them from up here, or you could go into under players under this drop down, and go into PCs. It's going to be the same. Um, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna load some pregens, so I'm getting a little ahead. But if you go down to players and the PCs, um, you get import characters. If uh, you have other tables that have characters in them that have the fantasy rounds, uh, you could load them in. So I got all these, you know. I'll get uh, traveler out of my traveler test, I guess. Uh, there we go. You get a couple more in here, All right? And again, you could get them um, from PCs. You drag and drop them in. Uh, these guys are a little bit more fleshed out with gear, so this when we go show our automation later, it'll matter because you know they have full actions. They have um, you know assault rifle, breaching charge knife. They have all the cool stuff. All right, so uh, in the combat tracker, again, this is how we track uh, normal rounds of combat. I could, on the sidebar, go to NPCs, and I could put in, you know, whatever I have for NPCs. Uh, I don't know. We didn't load too much in here, but, you know, Jungle Holler, Escape Road, and some of that Enhanced Liquor. Right. 
So these, these could go in here and, and what you do, uh, we'll get in there later, but this is how we're, we're going to manage combat initiative step order. This is like the automation comes in combat tracker. So we want to make sure before the game starts that we load it with at least our NPCs uh, and then also uh, NPCs as the encounters come up and we can, we'll see how that works later. So next combat tracker party sheet, same thing. We want to make sure that our party is in here. So I go to PCs. And when everybody's after character creation, we'll go ahead and put them in here. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move this up over here. I don't play with this open typically, but uh, I'm going to do some things. I want to keep it open. We're going to do something that is very traveler specific to Fantasy Grounds right now. We're going to talk about our ships tab. All right. This is unique to uh, Traveler and Starfinder. They both manage their ships in the ships tab of the party sheet on Fantasy Grounds. Um, both, the, both the developer Super Teddy and Mad Beardman. Super Teddy does Starfinder and Mad Beardman does Traveler. And they actually connected and talked about the best way to implement this. And they actually used each other's kind of design ideas. So if you play one, you could kind of understand the other, how this works. On fantasy grounds so on the main tab uh, if i go to like randall feld here uh, they also have a ships tab and it's empty they don't have an assigned spacecraft so i just want to show that these are empty so this is um not in our normal 101 classes what i'm about to do is create a a, a ship real quick um full ship design is its own class so this isn't this is going to be just to show you that this is this is here and but more importantly Put them in the ships tab and then have your players assign their roles and all that so let's slow things down we have on the sidebar we have player records uh, you can see that you have pc spacecraft records and pc records these are the player the character sheets that we've been i keep popping open pc spacecraft are, is the ship that they're flying so i'm going to go ahead and i'll create the high and dry right um, to create a new record, you hit the add item here. And we have this empty, all these empty fields. And you can manually go through and fill these all out. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because Fantasy Grounds has awesome automation. Uh, what we're going to do is use what is called an MPC record. So NPCs, just like I was showing on the combat tracker, they could be anything. They could be all these creatures, uh, mercenaries, whatever. Solomani agents, things like that. Um, but there's also PC spacecraft records. Now, players can't see any of this stuff under campaign. They, have, they don't have access to anything, I think, except for items and any shared images uh, and shared systems. Uh, but, oh, and Task Chain is down here now, too. Great. So, what I'm going to do, uh, I want to make this a scout courier. That's what the high and dry is. I guess I didn't load everything, so I didn't have a type S. I'm assuming this is a type S. Now, this record, if I click the task link, this has a bunch of information. But you can see it looks looks different than a PC one. But really, the, the information, the data is all here. All you do is you grab the task link of the record, TAS, task link of the record, and you go and drop it over here. It just filled out the entire player record. So this is now all filled out. We have our systems. Uh, our double turret is here. Uh, we could pick the weapon for our double turret. Do we want a sandcaster? All right, th those kind of things. So I can go to items, um, and I could go to, uh, I think there, it's called spacecraft scale weapons. Yep. And make this a sandcaster. Uh, there should be, you know, it's a double turret. So there are, if you, if you own the high guard, um, all those weapons are in here. The double turret options are all there, actually. So uh, this, this is just a core rule book. I could do if I wanted, I can make it a single sand cast or in a single pulse laser if I wanted. Uh, but just for now, just to show that's how we get it in there. Um, cargo, notes, and fuel so you how much fuel you're tracking on the ship refined and unrefined it can all go values can be entered in here now one thing i want to point out before we do this i have three crew required positions is the minimum requirements uh per the end for the record pilot astrogator and engineer so uh we're going to modify that here in a second but i'm going to show why this is important first so uh this will call it the high and dry right high and 
drive. So we have this PC spacecraft. I am going to put it here on the in the party sheet, party and ship sheet for Traveler. Uh, it doesn't matter which, which task, but I'm going to grab this task link. I'm going to drop it here. Right, it is now on the ships tab. Next step is to take the PCs in the campaign and you have to add them to this part. And they're going to populate as passenger. Now, Jazer, uh, you still got my character, right? So I'm going to open it up for you just so they could see what it's about to do. Now, players have the agency to change their crew position when they go to ships on the ships tab, side, side of the PC record, and do a drop down. They have astrogator, engineer, and pilot. So go ahead and change your crew position. So I changed it, and it threw an error on my screen. Did it. Let me go ahead and close it, maybe. Let me see what happens when I do it. Let's see. Oh, it sh yeah, it changed on mine, but it didn't. Yeah. I go ahead and change it. I'm going to try one more time. I'm going to close it. Maybe I was probably holding something open, maybe. I just changed it to engineer. Did You, you didn't get oh, any yeah, errors? There it is. Okay, no yeah. That time, yeah. I, was, I was probably holding it when I had your character sheet open. So that's, like, hopefully that was it. Uh, you could go ahead and change. That was, uh, you have the you have position of Talix. Go to Talix and do it. See if it does the same thing. Yeah, that was probably because I had it open. Okay. Now, you remember, we only had these three positions available, but we know we could have, you know, uh, a doctor, a medic. Uh, we have Marines, that kind of thing. That goes back to this, what I was talking about, is these crew requirements. You have to manually add them. So I could do kind of comma separated. So Marine, uh, doctor, or medic, whatever you want to call it. I probably think it's medic if you go by the rules. Uh, what other crew positions could we have? It, it, make cook, whatever. You keep comma separating them here. And we go back uh, to, I'll go to Randall here. Now these positions start opening up. Oh, what's the fun one? What, what did I miss? I missed a big one. How about Gunner? Double click that. There we go. So Talix will be a Gunner, right? If I go, oh, you're using Talix. I'll do Randall. Randall will be the Gunner, right? And then I hit show. Now they have the ability to shoot the Sandcaster. All right, this logged on a task difficulty eight. Got 11 for an effect of three. See, it's all there. Uh, Randall must have turret gunner. The, did I get that right? Did I guess right? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, he has a bunch of turrets. I must have been playing around with this. But that's why I didn't get the unskilled check. Because if he didn't have it, all right, uh, this is because it's Traveler. Say he doesn't have any gunner skill. I'm going to delete them all. Right, he's he's just got the unskilled skill. He doesn't have jack of all trades, so it should be at a minus three now. I go back and go to his ship and attack. Let's see. No, oh, still got it. I have to go through and figure out what's. Oh, I may have to. There it goes. I had to hit re-click re show so it refreshed. Now it's now it's at a minus two. So he's unskilled. You can see, it's minus three for his unskill. I just got the decks of one. Um, for example, though, if say he had jack of all trades, this is another, since we're on that topic, I could go with skills. I could do jack of all trades. And I'll drag and drop it to his sheet. And uh, it's going to be at a, we'll make it a one. Uh, oh, this column one, jack of all trades. All right, so now when I make my unskilled checks, let me just make sure it's set. Uh, actions. Oh, ship, sorry. Show and I make this attack. It's showing uh, at minus uh, one now because of the J task jack of all trades. So it, it takes that automation. And it it understands that. I was I just threw a lot at you. Um, this is this again could be it's totally its own class, but it's because it's so unique to Traveler, and that's something that GMs really want to use. I wanted to show this. Any questions about setting the party and ship sheet and how uh, crew change their role? 
Uh, we'll, we may have time to do a, a actual spacecraft combat tracker. Uh, I definitely have a normal combat tracker on a schedule. No questions? Okay, next up, kind of keep on going down here. Um, we have task chains. Uh, we could create a task chain right here in Fantasy Grounds. So I can I could do a create item, and we'll call this J Drive operation, All right? And then I'm going to hit uh, add and add because I know it's two skills. Now what you do is you you take the skills from the character data, and we know we need a astro Asian. Got that in there. And then the next one is going to be, oh, that's funny, I did that. Uh, next one is gonna be a engineer J drive. All right, so then these uh, duplications are junk, but um, so what we do, let me go back to some characters. Do you have a character right now with astrogation? I don't know if we do. Nope, athletics. Does see have engineer J drive stuff? Talix is no good to us. Here we go, Randall. Randall's going to be at least Randall. And then I may get, make uh, somebody, let me give Talix engineer J drive or something real quick for this example. So he's going to get the skill engineer J drive and it's going to be at one. Perfect. All right, so say these are the two characters. So Randall will first, uh, you take the task difficulty because uh, per the rules is four. He's going to make an astrogation by dragging and releasing astrogation. And it logs the effect. So, uh, and that gives you the next uh, DM modifier. So then Randall made his roll, and then the engineer, Shade Drive, and do it and do that. All right. The result was a seven from the, the task chain. Clear as mud. Once you have these set, you don't have to recreate them. Uh, creating them on the fly is probably slower than just having your players roll some dice. I understand that if you're making a task chain on the fly. Uh, but there, there's some players and GMs that referees that like having a bunch of pre-built task chains uh, ready to go. Um, it's totally up to you. And once you have it set in here, it'll always be here for that campaign. Now as you do is you, you right click and you clear the results and so now it's a reusable task chain. All right, coming down, we covered modules, uh, assets. That's a cl different class. That's for making your own custom maps uh, and, and some other things. Uh, we're not going to be using it for this class. Notes. Um, notes are fun um, way to, to do stuff in games. So we could do a session notes, for example. Uh, what's neat about Fantasy Grounds is you could drag and drop stuff in. Um, text, so like this text could go here. But say that was something that the, the GM was doing. Um, the players don't have to manually transcribe everything. They can just get it out of um, the chat window. Um, you could also, if I share, uh, say, I say share this image to my players, right? Uh, you share an image by right clicking, you get this radial. You go to the nine o'clock position, and I hit share, and then share record. And I could see that Jazz is now viewing this. Um, and I'll, if they want this as part of the session note, the image or a map, more importantly, probably maps, right? Sector maps, stuff like that. Uh, they could put it in their notes. Um, whether the player makes it public or not, GM could, uh, we could review them all. So even if they don't do public, um, the GM could see it. Now, if they make it public, the players could see it then. Um, I, I have, uh, my own notes I use as a GM. I have, um, essentially one's a henchman note so it's all the it's all the for our pirates of the next campaign i have a note with all the npc records like these records uh dragged and dropped in my notes uh and it's not just who they are but it's also what their specialty is uh for the crewing a ship and then which ship my crew usually has them assigned to because they are currently driving me crazy operating three different ships other than the harrier so uh, it's kind of wild uh, the way that campaign has evolved. 
let my notes help me handle all that. Yeah, you can see I could see his notes without, yeah, without his permission. All right. So we're getting down to the meat and potatoes. Um, before we get to that, I just want to show systems off real quick. Uh, I only have a few systems loaded that came with the March's adventure. If you get like, uh, man, what is it? The uh, the reach. Uh, let me go back to modules and insanity check. You get so it's reach, not the adventures. Yeah, there's there's a you know there's like an eighty dollar supplement, but you get like hundreds of systems. Oh god, it's a lot. I don't know if I got time to click through this and say, oh, that's it. I think it's behind uh, the claw. Yeah, there you go, behind the claw. All right, I'm going to load that. It might take a second. A lot of data loading. I bet you're right. Okay, so if I go back to, to systems down here, yeah, 17 pages of systems. Right. Goodness. All right, and if you the systems that give you the uh, UWP uh, Universal World Profile, so it's all here. Um, it gives you the trade codes, and if you hover over them, it'll actually tell you what, as a tool tip, what they are. Um, you go down to the spaceport and you unlock it. Uh, you you further cost you can save five hundred. You know, start filling it in. You you can roll it out when the, when the players get there. Uh, you roll it out ahead of time. Whatever you want to do uh, to make this um, unique to your campaign, these options are here to, for you to fill it out. Um, there's also um, trade. I'm gonna. I don't know if this is working yet. Let me go to trade goods. Yeah. So it's right now. This is under development. Hasn't been updated yet. Uh, the idea is to get that there. These trade goods, though, are good. Are good. If you go to the uh, party sheet into the uh, ship, it should be good for inventory. So you could add this. I got 10 tons of advanced cargo. You know, I uh, I probably already blew through the high and rise cargo hold, but say it's a, uh, you know, a free trader or something. I got some room, 30 tons of this. Uh, you could also make uh, individual lines of, um, uh, you know, uh, mail, right? Uh, I have, um, you have the, the flat rate freight. So you have the, uh, Incidental, doing this off the top of my head, major and minor, I think is right. Is that it? So if you if you use those tables, uh, you just have to fill out what you're taking. Uh, say it's going to be, you know, 20 tons of major, 10 tons of minor, one ton of mail, and, you know, one ton of, ins you know, it's all, this is all available, right? And then if I open up the high and dry, I don't know if it's going to be in the cargo. Yep, and it transcribes all over here. So you can see that I've, I've blown through the, the 12 tons of free space, obviously. That just didn't get refreshed. I should have probably done it the other direction, but um, let's see if it changes to nine, what it does. Yeah, there we go. It resets. There we go. I should have done it here first. And, but either way, because they're linked, you just got to remember to play with it to get it to a reset. Okay, so that's trade goods and system. Those are unique to this rule set over here under a campaign. And again, I don't, I, that's what I said. I was surprised when I saw task chains down here because they are up here. So I get, we got two locations. Uh, this is for saved task chains. If you're going to save a task chain and load it up, I get it. It's interesting. Uh, Homeworld, um, currently Mongoose Traveler 2 does not use this. Uh, it's a holdover because he built it off the Mongoose Traveler 1 edition. Um, and it's for few players that do like using this system, but they, they'll have to create their own record, uh, right? And uh, that's about all they could do. Um, but then if you create it, then you could add it. It's still available on the character sheet on the main section of Homeworld. So if it's, a, if it's an optional rule that you homebrew that you want to use, it's still there. Uh, I think he's hesitant to get rid of it with the expectation that surely someday there'll be a supplement that comes out where he's going to need it again. So why get rid of it? It would be the 2300 ID book. Uh, yeah, exactly. What, I haven't played 2300. Is that going to be based on like country, like France, 
is that kind of home world or is it yeah, yeah I've, had a, I've had a look through some of the the, the free bits of the pdf on uh, drive through rpg and that makes references to home worlds again and uh different things affect where, where you come from and the like the gravity of the planet and uh, affects yeah. further in your career etc okay yeah that's cool that's uh uh, I like that. Um, the 2300 if, uh, is actually built on this core uh, Mongoose Traveler 2. He's just, it's just code that he's, he's building that rule set off of. So uh, if you, right now, the, I, the plan is if you buy 2300, uh, you don't actually have to own the core rule book of Mongoose Traveler. So they're, I think they're, I think Mongoose is super customer friendly in that regard. When, when they're, tr they're, they're, they're keenly aware of what they're asking customers to pay for, and if they could, if they could make workarounds to make you not have to double dip and buy stuff, they're they're gonna entertain it at least. I think that's great. All right, uh, so let, last we're getting the last fifteen minutes, and this is the meat and potatoes of automation, everybody. So um, running an adventure, um, I, I know I loaded a couple. I loaded a high and dry. Um, most GMs have two methods. They can run that off of the reference manual if there is one. Um, it's, not it's not a business requirement by Fantasy Rounds, so this does not have a reference manual for the adventure. So it only has story entries, which is fine. I, I prefer story entries myself, uh, which are right here. They're linked here on the sidebar under story. Um, now I got two stories loaded. I have the Destination loaded, and I have the March's Adventure High and Dry. Uh, I can filter that down, do exactly what I want. I just want the March's Adventure High and Dry. All right, and it starts we're going flipping right through that, that book there. Uh, you, know, you have this task link, you have the image. Uh, again, we could share these things with our players. Um, you can start flipping through this. So if this is a linear adventure where you just turn the page and play, this is it's all here. Um, now... It gives you uh, the scout, the high and dry, that. Uh, I'm sure it comes with the record sheet, but then in, we have, it might, have to, might be easier to expand it that way to read some of this stuff. But if you're good at reading UWP on the fly, the, the hex, hexadecimal, not true hexadecimal, but if you're good at reading it, uh, you know exactly what this means. Otherwise, you just refer to the reference. Uh, but he's got story entries now. So story entries nested in story entries. So if I want to see the story entry on Flammarion, get the background information on the planet, uh, it opens up a new story. And then that even has an embedded system information, right? Again, where I could go ahead. This is this record, this Flammarion record, is the exact same record on my systems record for the high and dry. Right, it just takes me to the same thing. It's all hyperlinked and nested. And one of the again, one of the beautiful things about fantasy grounds. So as you play, you could you could share these records. I could I could right click, I could share it. Uh, something I haven't showed yet. You could actually drag and drop the hyperlinks, this the task link into the chat. Uh, now now my players could click on the chat and open it up. Or here's the mind blower. They could grab a task link and put it in their hot bar for reference. Anything with a task link. And it's it's uh, you can see it's one through twelve. That's function keys. So I could hit F one and bring that up. Um, some players also like to put like attacks in there. So maybe this is where the the assault rifle attack. Oop, that's this one. The attack and the damage goes. So they could actually roll, you know, on the fly to hit marginal success. Roll the damage F three. I don't recommend that. Uh, you have to be kind of, you have to know what's stored in there because that's not clear what's in there. Uh, but that's, you know, some players do that. Um, I'm just going to get rid of it because I, I don't advocate for it, but it's, as fantasy rounds, it's so functional. Um, but I'm going to get, I'm going to jump ahead on the story because I know um, what I want to show you. It's an encounter with some tensor wolves right before the volcano explodes. Uh, so story, I'm going to get kind of near the end and let's see in the crater. So, yep, map crater. So one, by the time near the end of the adventure, you see I'm all the way down at the bottom. It's in chapter order. If you, uh, I like, re, I like uh, referring to this as like basic coding. Uh, they, they, they use this numeric system so they could always insert more, right? They don't have to renumber it. They could actually insert in based on the way they number it. Anyway, uh, so in the crater, it has a map. 
once I'm on the map, we have story entries pinned to the map. So I could share this with my players. All right, and this is where kind of a theater of the mind. And they're talking about, all right, well, uh, we just came up through the lava tube, um, cut through the lip of the crater after they after they scaled the the mount uh, the mountain here. Can't think of the name, not Vesuvius, but <laughs> it does. It's going to do the same thing. Uh, so once it cuts through the lava tube, then the players just say they're going to go down to the lake. I could click on this, and it's going to take me directly to that story entry. And guess what? There's a battle map. I'm going to open this battle map. This is the um, what we're going to be playing this encounter on. So I'm usually like this over here. All right, uh, there is, let me go ahead. I'm going to lay down a layer. I'm going to set grid, um, something like that. Uh, we don't like playing on squares. We like playing on hexes. So let me unlock it, go to grid. It's going to be, I believe, this type of grid. And it's hard to see. You could actually change the color of it if you want to make it stand out. So I guess a black kind of looks good. Um, okay. Distance modifier is at 1.5 meters, which is it's perfect. You resize this. Uh, maybe I need, because uh, this is fantasy rounds, maybe we need some cloud cover, right? So uh, now we got this kind of immersive map going. This. And I'm going to make it fit and unlock it. So now we got this going, right? So company, we have uh, a battle. Uh, any other rule set, I believe it's referred to as an encounter. Uh, here we call it a battle. And uh, it's a tensure's wolf. So I'm going to go ahead and add battle to combat tracker. Right? So the tensure's wolf got added to the combat tracker. Go ahead and close the story entry. I'm not going to need that for now. Go with that. And I can pin this to the back, I guess, just so I have it there for later. Uh, really depends on your style of play. But I, because I do want to come back to this, because after this, this story entry, they're going to get to the high and dry story entry. So I do kind of, what I did was I hit this back arrow. So I'm bringing it, let me bring it back. I hit this, this arrow. I pinned it to the back. Right, so it's kind of there for me for reference if I need to, you know, quickly do something like that. Now you can kind of see this is how I have my encounter set. Um, so this wolf, you can see it was automatically dropped. There he is, right here. I could go down now. I'm gonna put my character down. Ah, they're the wrong, they're the wrong hexes. I got the wrong one. Let me fix that. That'll drive me crazy. So unlock it. Hex. It's this one. That straightens it out. Okay, cool. All right, so we have this, my character, I'll put Randall down, and I'll put Talix down. Now, right now, my players, they can't see this wolf on the map. I know they know something's up because I gave them a battle map, and it's Traveler, so uh, they're already on edge. But until I say, like, I'm going to describe this scene. As you guys approach the uh, um, the edge of the lake, you, you see a furry four-legged movement up ahead of you. You know, they'll, they'll kind of they'll do a recon, and then I'll I'll tell them how big this thing is, and tell them it's a tenter's wolf, and this is where it's at. It's scrounging for food, but it is clearly between you and uh, the ship. Um, on the NPC record sheet, it even has under notes it has the image, and I'll share this with my players as I describe what they're seeing. I add that more of that immersion. This it's almost it's to me it's better than holding up the adventure book and trying to you know cover the text. Right, uh, and just to show them the image, I don't know if you've ever done that at your table, but I don't know why I'm always trying to cover text. There's no way my players could read from where they're sitting, but it's always what I do. So that, share that, so that's awesome. Uh, then I'll say roll for initiative. Now, Fantasy Grounds um, and Mongoose uh, understands that initiative rolls are based on the effect roll on a eight. It doesn't matter what I have set down here. I'll make it impossible. The effect roll is going to be always on an eight because it's there's no optional rules. It's uh, and they're running at rules as written. So for example, I guess I'll run Randall. I'll give him his initial roll. I believe it's on the actions tab. Yep, uh, actions tab is where the initiative is on Traveler, not the main tab like other rule sets. I'll double click. It rolls my initiative. So all right. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I got to share the map. Right, right click, share a map. I've been sharing image. There we go. Yeah, I know who's, who's currently viewing this record, right? Because that's there. Sorry about that. So um, I've logged my initiative. Um, I did do something I didn't expect. Oh, I see, I see you rolled zero. So like, well, I knew I rolled a 13, All right? So it's a plus five, 13 minus eight is five. Nine minus eight is one. Nine minus eight is one. So that comes up in the forums a lot on fantasy rounds. Why? Why? What is the initiative off of it? It's actually hard coded to an eight. You are, you are rolling for an effect. The effect is the the dice roll minus the eight. So it could be a negative. If I rolled a five, five minus eight is a negative three. Right. I still got to roll my tenter's wolf. I like to just uh, doesn't matter how many NPCs I I have. I always go to menu. Uh, initiative and I like to roll NPC initiatives this way. It just does a mass roll. There's no dice popping up, so it makes it nice, uh, quick, and clean. First up is Randall Feld. Uh, I'll show you how to do it and then we'll let um, Jazer do his two characters. So, Randall, this is kind of be like what their screen kind of looks like. Uh, yeah. Oh, got a so, question? Yeah, I do, real quick. Um, if you have a player that has leadership, and mm -hmm. they want to do that before initiative and they forget. Yeah. If they roll initiative, it will fix the combat tracker will accordingly. It? Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, leadership uh, is something you do uh, at the beginning of a combat, um, but that's good to know. So, he only has a rapier. So, I, I'm going to move. Um, what happens is uh, I have a free move. Okay, there it goes. So uh, it actually tracks movement. So he's got a six meter move. This is what the player will put. The GM just has to approve it. And that's if tokens are locked. You could unlock tokens and then everybody can move around, but then you kind of lose that effect of, of uh, how much people are moving. Uh, next up is my character. Go ahead. I doubt you have any weapons, but go ahead and just make a move for me. You can see how that auto centered for me when it was, was uh, my character's turn. So I approve it. And then what you do, you go ahead and pass it in the combat tracker. Bottom left, uh, that little down arrow, elongated V. Unless, unless you do have, did you end up giving character a weapon? Oh, you, you got your dew claw. That's good, because you were, made you an Aslan. But yeah, we'll wait till you get in a melee. Well, I think Talix, if he hits, will probably kill this thing. He's got an assault rifle. So go ahead and end, end your turn. Or you say pass turn, however, if you want the GM to pass it, whatever your table, however you run it. All right, so Talix. Go ahead, you can move Talix and shoot, or you could not shoot, you could aim. If you aim, uh, right, you have, in Fantasy Grounds, you have these uh, effects. We have some of the effects. Nope, I lied. Straight to your faces. It's modifiers, right? You have the aim, right? You have the laser sight. You have... Um, uh, the ship bonus fractal, but you have penalties if it's a fast target, stuff like that. So um, if you want to to take take aim, I hit a plus one from modifier, and then if you don't mind, uh, what you if you don't mind me, I'm going to walk you through shooting that rifle at this thing just for the sake of the class. We only got about five minutes left. Uh, so hit control and left click your tenter's wolf. Okay, that's 21 meters. Oh, yeah, 21 meters. If I hover over your thing, it actually shows you the distance of your hovering over your target. Now that it's targeted, what you do is on your weapons tab, you for assault rifle, you hit the attack button, which is that, that three. So double click the attack box with the three in it. All right, and then here we have a hit plus one damage. And then go ahead and roll your damage. That's the 3d6. So 3d6, we got a 12 plus 1 is 13. You can see that its hits got reduced by 11, right? Because it, it did absorb some of the damage. Why did it absorb that damage? If I go to that record, it uh, should have uh, per kinetic protection of 2. So it did 13 minus 2 for 11. So the automation took over. Now, what Fantasy Grounds didn't do, it wasn't a video game. When you rolled the hit, it didn't automatically roll the damage out. It gave the opportunity for the player to make that dice roll. Still a pen and paper in that respect. 
All right, and then last thing, see auto center, went to the Tentra's Wolf. I am just gonna go ahead and say, uh, we're gonna get there and I'm gonna attack. So I could uh, target, I could control and left click. It targets a uh, character. Uh, I don't do that as a GM. I do a drag and drop method because it's fast for me. I just grab the bite attack, release it over my token. I want to hit. I got a hit with plus three damage. I do the same thing. Drag and drop. All right, 15 damage. So my character uh, lost endurance. All of the endurance is down to zero. Strength is down to one. About to go unconscious. Automation took over on fantasy rounds. I didn't have to do anything. All right, so for those that just watched that, does that make sense? Any, you want to see another round of that? Any questions? Did the map have uh, line of sight on it or not naturally? Uh, not naturally. The older stuff um, does not come with it. Um, the Fantasy Grounds uh, community developer for Traveler was not uh, required to go back and add Line of Sight to all the uh, pre-existing modules, but everything that's been released since Line of Sight was implemented has been coming out with it. Because it, it will not get approved by Smiteworks to go to the web store now unless it has Line of Sight. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, some of the older modules uh, don't have it. But I mean, this one I have it anyway. I, in my opinion, I don't know if I want to put terrain line of sight on all of these rocks. It'd be, I don't know, a little painful. I don't, I don't know that that juice is worth that squeeze. This is this is the only battle map that comes with this adventure. But yes, um, going. For the last year or so, maybe longer now, they have been getting released with line of sight. I believe all my Pirates of Dranak stuff has it for sure. Has the older stuff got the? I know with the the new twenty twenty two editions that they've bringing out of the game, they've adjusted the all the ship maps so they now more or less work as battle maps where you're looking straight down from instead of that side on view is the plan to do that for the older stuff or is that also going to be no. usable yeah yeah the plan is um that there you will get whether you you wait to purchase it or purchase it now uh, it it'll be implemented eventually i don't i don't know the timetable but you're right right now all the ship uh records are isometric and i could you could actually kind of play on that I, it's a little bit painful, but if I go back to the, uh, like a panache, right? And I go to the, where's the notes? I have the deck plan. We have the old isometric deck plan. You could actually um, get a pretty, pretty close, not perfect, probably, um, grid down, because you could do this diamond shape. All right, so when I go ahead and draw this, I just got to, boy, I got to get zoomed. Uh, you have to on aspect ratio it, maybe, and I want high, so I'm going to that 21. I can do this 30. And then let me bump this around a little bit. I'm using this as my reference. Uh, right, you, and you play with it so you get it kind of close, and then you hide your grid. So now that now they'll snap to that. You know what I mean? Not perfect. And I don't know how many people want to play on an isometric map, but uh, it's it's plausible. By the time you uh, do all the grid stuff, you could just go onto the forge and get the free ones. There's a whole bunch oh, by yeah. CR. CRW, CRW Chris. Yeah. Something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he's done a phenomenal job making and they come with line of sight and they come if you own the source material. He's got a pen to go to that record. It's, it's excellent. Oh, okay, I was going to hold out and buying know. things like High Guard until the uh, 2022 uh, edition came out. <laughs> I don't uh, know they were getting updates or not. Yeah, you, you'll get them, but they're, they're not, you're not getting them when they come out. Uh, we're still waiting on the core 2022 update. But let me, uh, I'm going to see exactly what we're talking about. So let's do, um, I'm on the Forge. Let's go and what it was, Free Trader? No. 
CRW. Trying to remember, is that Fairwood maybe? Oh, yeah, it was Fairwood. Shoot. Dang it, Greg. Just, I got impatient. So, Ferroid is the developer. He's our, he's a matter, uh, the, the guy, the creator. Okay, so he's got all these, uh, these deck plans. Uh, he's got more than this. I'm not sure. Here they are. Yeah. All right. So, this, whatever, Mercenary Cruiser. But he has all kinds of stuff. He's got these great uh, 2D deck plans. Uh, it's not showing. Uh, how about this? I'll just cheat because he doesn't give you a preview. I own them. So let me just activate them and show you how, how good they are. CRW uh, has got these space ports. Uh, free and far trader, right? So free and far trader. I go to my images. These are these are awesome. So they're worth showing. And we'll sort it to CRW deck plans. And we'll do the free trader. All right, so this is now he's got them 2D and they're not isometric and they're playable. You drop, you know, your token on here. But what he's done too is um, he's got uh, enable line of sight, disable line of sight, enable disable lighting. So uh, you see that token can't see anything else. Let me get let me get in here. All right, so if you go up here, right, then he's got to open the door. Hit open. That just opened for him. Six. See how that line of sight works. Uh, cool. I'll have to add that to the list. Yeah, I, went so a little, I went a little nuts during the Steam sale, and and uh, Fantasy Grounds were dropping all those uh, Starfinder maps. Okay. Oh, they look so nice. Oh yeah, the tiles. <laughs> this one, this one, pretty much used up blew my Steam budget, my Steam sale budget on uh, maps of uh, Starfinder. Oh, well, I do you want to point out, Pharaoh's a saint. Zero. So if you find them on. Yeah, Pharaoh. P P H A R O I D. Fan fan of Fantasy Grounds Academy. I, I have no problem showing this off. So, um, and we didn't have time to go through these tools. I'll have to be in my GM 102 class. But all right, we're about four minutes over. Any any other questions while I have you? And then um, I'll give you a pause and we'll cut the recording. And then you could ask any questions you were holding that you didn't want recorded. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream now. Hopefully that was pretty insightful. Got you going on Mongoose Traveler on Fantasy Grounds. Uh, thank you guys for your time. And I am killing the stream now, or the recording now.